Oftentimes we say we have a special car to introduce you, but today we have an extra special car. As this rolled in today, I, I just couldn't get my eyes off of all the lines, all the originality and the things. If you're a Mustang fan, this has to be in your top 10. If you're a real Mustang collector, this has to be in your top two. This is a 1969 GT500 with the 428 Cobra Jet engine under the hood. Only a few years they actually offered this motor, they actually made this motor. We're gonna get a chance to look at the setup today and walk our way through tuning and making sure this engine runs as good as it's supposed to. Okay, this is what we found under the hood. It has a um, single accelerator pump, so it's called. It's not called a dual pumper, not called a double pumper carburetor, it's a single pumper carburetor. Um, so it's got a vacuum secondary on it. And uh, it looks to me though, like the back float has a set of jets in it also, so front and back can be adjusted. It's missing the um, vacuum advance on the uh, distributor, which it originally had. Now, I, I spoke to the customer and he informed me, yep, no, this originally had it. And I can see that it originally had it because on the carburetor, there's actually a vacuum spigot there that's been plugged. So underneath the hood, we're seeing what we expected to see, except for it's like, immaculately clean everything. I think this car is going to run pretty good so let's kind of get to it and see where we are as far as what we're expecting to tune ignition and fuel we can go through and we can do that all the pieces and parts are there they're changed a little bit let's see what we can do with it tells us that if this was rated at 335 horsepower, which it was from the factory, we should see somewhere between 280, 290 horsepower at the wheels. That's assuming that everything's correct. And that's what we do here is we make things correct. Now, Paul put his foot on the floor and we saw clouds of smoke come out of this car. I have a suspicion that there's some other things happening under the hood, but we're gonna take a look at that in a minute. But the results are this, it made 190 horse, it made 216, it made 212 horse at the wheels, not even close to where it should be. And we're going to um, very likely be able to make a big improvement. But beyond that, let's just look at what we were able to record and what we are able to see and what the evidence shows us. Paul said to us, we, I think it's rich. It smells bad and it, it, I think it's rich, but it's definitely, definitely um, burning a lot more fuel than it needs to. So we'll have to adjust that. So we'll take a look here and if you've watched any of our videos, you know that we talk about air-fuel ratio. It's the same thing as reading the spark plug, but you get a full report instead of one spot on the spectrum. So when we look at the air-fuel, if we were to take this as empirical evidence, it's actually pretty good, except for it's blowing clouds of smoke. So we know that it doesn't like this 12 area here, and when it gets into the 11s, we have a sensor in there that is calibrated slightly differently, so it's actually reading um, 0.6 richer than what it really is, which means that everything here is in the actual 11s and goes down into the 10s by the end. Each one of the passes got progressively smokier. It made power a little bit in the middle, but each time, this is what we were looking at. We ended up in the 12s, 11s, and up towards the end of the pass, on the last pass, we actually end up in the 10s. So we know we're gonna have to take fuel out it may be partially that the choke is stuck on a little bit. It may be that all the jets are just too big or that the timing's off. We'll have to find out. But at this point, the engine sounds good. It's as smooth as could be. There's not a tick. There's not a noise. There's nothing. It has 32,000 miles. It shouldn't be making any noise, and it doesn't. So we're going to go through and adjust that now and make it correct. I'm checking the little speed fuel circuits. I just want to see where they are. So like in normal settings, anywhere between one and a quarter, one and a half. And we know this is extremely rich, so we're looking to see if maybe one of them's, you know, too high. Uh, right now, this one was at uh, one and a quarter, so it's pretty much perfect. So we just screw them all the way in. We bring it back out exactly where it was. So we just go like, you know, half of a turn and then one turn and then quarter. Same thing on the other side. We're going to check and see where it is. When a car's burning this much fuel all the time, there has to be something that's making it burn that much fuel. 
So that's what we're doing right now. We check it, it's got half a turn, one turn, and okay, that one was way off. That was almost, uh, almost two full turns. Half, one and a quarter, okay? Now I'm adjusting the choke. Now, if this car was to run in the winter time, which I don't, I can't imagine anybody ever driving this in the winter time, but anyway, then you'd want to have like a normal choke setting. In the summertime, you want to back the choke off and give it a very lean setting. Pump it a couple times when you go to start it the first time and just let it sit for a minute. It'll warm up. You don't need very much choke. So we're going to back the choke off quite a bit. Okay, in order to lean the carburetor out, we're going to have to go inside the carburetor. We've done a little bit of on the outside. The uh, passenger side low speed was uh, way too far out, so that's going to add to uh, you know the rich numbers that we're seeing and the, the air fuel that is, is reading in the 11s and 12s all the time, even when it's just cruising. Um, it's reading in the 11s, and when he stomps it, it goes down into the 10s. So I'm actually going to back off in the accelerator pump. We're going to check the float to make sure that the float is at the correct spot. And because we're taking it off anyway, we're going we're gonna to set it outside the car, which is simple. We just uh, bring it up. We set it so that it's level or 90 degrees to the, uh, the frame of the float bowl. So we're going to remove the float bowl, check the jets, check the power valve, and then put everything back on with a slightly smaller number. Okay, a little bit better. okay so we're just going to knock this off. We just have to get it a little bit loose. And then this whole section will come off. And then in here's what we're after. So this is our metering block here. And they stick, the gaskets just stick on these. So probably what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this fuel line off and pull the whole thing out. So we just give me a minute, we'll take the fuel line off, we'll take that out. Yeah. So you're gonna take the whole unit off. Now we, we need to get at this, nothing's ripped yet. The gasket's all in good shape, but this is crooked too. So again, it only has a single gasket from what I can see, but it's got the extra thick gasket. I've got a couple of new ones here, so we're gonna make that work properly and we're gonna get this off. Okay, I'm just reinstalling the, um, The float bowl. Now on this, it's got a couple of different things that modern carburetors don't have. We, we went over it in the beginning, but um, it has this little flap. And as you give it the gas, you actually open this up, which exposes air to be able to replace the fuel that's going in there and also allows it to breathe. But you have to get it in the right spot when you're putting it back on. So there's a fuel line that's a hard line you have to have that in the center here. And then I've plugged this with a proper plug. It had a screw in it with a piece of rubber. It's just sort of a you know, backyard way that some people do it. And uh, I've adjusted the float, lowered it. it, was a tiny bit high, not much. I put a 66 jet in it, it had a 69. It's just way too rich. And the float, the, the, um, the choke was always on. So I lowered the choke here on the adjustment and I straightened the choke flap. Now it's straight, goes straight up and down rather than all bent. If you want a step-by-step -step guide on how we do carburetor tuning, check out the link below on the Pontiac Tempest we did two weeks ago. I was right about the one I, I guessed. It's 10 degrees. Okay, 2,500. 25, yep. Okay, our first set of adjustments are always the biggest set. We've reset the floats both front and back. We've, rem we've removed the uh, front set of main jets because it was way too rich. We've gone from a 69 down to a 66. We've reset the low speed um, idle air adjustment so that it's even on both sides and they're both just about one and an eighth. We checked where the timing is. So the timing's at 10 and 26, so it's really mellow. I'm gonna check the specs in this car to see where it was from the factory but we're probably gonna be able to add some to that. We basically leaned out the entire front of the carburetor just a little bit, and I replaced the gasket on the power valve with a thinner one. Also, I've replaced the power valve with one that was stamped correctly with a 
All right, so there's a little bit less smoke coming out the back. We're working on that still. It's getting there. We're seeing 12s. We're finally seeing 12s. And here's the big thing. When he was cruising before, it would go 12, 11. It never went in the 10s, but it would cruise along. It very rarely ever hit the 13s. Now, I made him watch while he was cruising. And we were 13, 8, 14, 13, 8. Like, we were in the 13s, beautiful. It's just cruising where it should. And that's where your most of your work's going to be done. It's just sort of cruising along there, sort of, you know, not driving at 5,000 RPM. We have to make sure it's good. But even while we're going through, we saw 12, 12, 12, and then 11, and it came back to 12. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what we wanted. We wanted some 12s. So now we're going to look at it. We're probably going to make a couple more adjustments, but I'm going to check where the stock timing is because it's starting to make power. It's actually starting to make a bit more noise. It's starting to be a little bit louder that I can hear it's revving up a bit. With the air cleaner off, I know it's going to be louder. But... What I want to do now is check and see where the factory timing is supposed to be. And then I'm probably going to have to go in and lean up the back end. I didn't really want to take the back of the carburetor up, but I'm, I'm probably going to have to because it's just that rich. But we're going to check the air fuel first. So this is a comparison of the best when it first came in and where it is now. So there's when you initially step on the gas, there's quite a bit more torque here. You can see it here it's hitting now. And then it carries and it just goes up and up and up and falls over. So it's falling over a little bit later than it did before. Not much, but it's carrying way more torque all the way through the range, which is what we're looking to do here. We just want to make the engine run the best that it can. And uh, we're on the right path. time he drives it now and that's what the uh, that's what the filter on the whole filter housing before this last pass we changed the timing it was at 10 and 28 max timing on this engine would be 38 but it's a 10 and a half to one compression engine so at 91 octane out of the pump not going to be very happy it's not running on there at this point even when we got a little bit warm we put the filter back on we made more power we got it cleaned up a little bit more so now we just need to take the back off. Simple as that. So we're, we made 354 foot pounds and 200, and I mean, we, I think we made 258 horsepower at one point, but I was cutting them off right here at 3,800 to see where the smoke starts coming out the back and it's right there. We get to that point, there was a bit of a haze, but right after that, it just starts to cloud. So we know that it's the back mains. Now take some fuel out of the back. So now I'm taking the rear float bow off and the rear metering block so that I can access the rear main jets because we just still have too much fuel and we haven't touched this part yet. So we're gonna take some main jet out of it. series of passes we made a couple of changes to the back flow bowl which are your high speed main jets they work in conjunction with the front but what we did is we took those out we found out what number was in there was a 79 i was going to go down to a 76 but with the amount of smoke coming out i decided to go down to a 75 i'm really glad i did because we still had a haze of smoke above 4200 what we're going to do to adjust that is i'm going to order in a set of accelerator pump nozzles 
I believe that once it gets up to speed, it's drawing like a Venturi on the accelerator pump nozzle and dripping it down in there and still giving us more fuel than we would like. I'm gonna put a smaller accelerator pump nozzle in, something that they didn't really have access to when they built this car. They just would have said, ah, that's the best we can do. Or they used to take a pair of vice grips and just squeeze the nozzle a little bit, but that's kind of, uh, we don't need to do that anymore. It's a bit hokey. So we're going to do that, but we are now making almost 300 horse, 292 horsepower at the wheels, which is about 340 at the crank. They were rated at 335. We're now making almost 400 foot pounds, 394 foot pounds, but we're gonna have Paul come back. And what we're gonna do is replace the nozzle on the accelerator pump with a smaller nozzle. It's not the same car it was when it came in, but I think we can make it better. So we're gonna have him return on another day just to pull the smoke out of it. All right, the number one reason this car came in, this GT500, because it had smoke. And it had had smoke, it had a rich condition since day one. Since the first owner had it, there were records going back. They had taken it to the dealership. They complained about smoke. They complained about how rich it was. So we worked and we did all the normal things that we would normally do, which is just, just change out the jets and make sort of nice, normal adjustments to the carburetor. In this case, we had to go a little further, had to change the power valve, had to change the squirter size. Um, we checked on the squirter CC to make sure that it was the smaller one, so it's a 20 CC squirter. We backed off the uh, squirter adjustment and the low speed, and then what we did was we took more jet out of it. Because it was at 12.4 AFR, what we did was we actually worked our way through the 12.4. We made it come up to 12.6, 12.7, 12.8, which is a little bit more racy, but it's still like way within the bounds of safe. The car now doesn't make any smoke at all. It, it absolutely doesn't even make a drop of smoke all the way through e every single gear. We have to make one more adjustment because we went a little bit too far on the accelerator pump, but that's pretty much it. We're ready to go from here. We're very happy. It's now making 400 foot-pounds of torque, 299 horsepower at the wheels, running good, running clean, very happy with what we've got. We'll <laughs>